Hi, and welcome to Knit All The Things. My name is Laurel, I'm also known as West Maven on Instagram, Ravelry, and here. If you're new, this is a space where I talk about all the things I'm knitting, all the things I want to knit, and all things yarn. If you're returning, thank you so much for spending your time with me. Let's get cozy and jump right in. Today, let's talk about what I'm wearing. So first off, this was my second ever sweater, my second ever brioche anything and a lot a lot of tears were had with this sweater so the pattern is by petite knit it's the september sweater however there are modifications that were done and shared um by leah luca and if i'm saying that wrong i'm so sorry um but i will put all this information in the description below so this sweater <laughs> would not be a great second sweater for anyone. However, when you have just stubborn determination, you will do it. So I first saw the September sweater and thought, no, I'm good. I don't think I'm going to knit that. Just wasn't quite my style. But when I saw the modifications done by Leah, I changed my mind. So I believe that she did these modifications Perhaps, I guess I'm not her, so I can't speak on her behalf, but I think they were a nod to an Isabel uh, Moran or Morant sweater that was popular at the time. And she made the modifications by basically adding increases and decreases um, just to give it this interesting effect. So let me stand up and kind of show you. So there are increases and decreases around the neck to kind of have, I always think of these as like wings, but whatever that is. And then along the sleeve. So I knit this sweater with Knitting for Olive and I purchased the yarn at the very beginning of the pandemic or I wanna say it was 20, summer of 2020. And I purchased it specifically with this sweater in mind. And so let's talk about the yarn for a minute. It's Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. And at that time, instead of having, they have like little cute round, I think of them as pillows, but little cute skeins um, of the mohair. I believe they ran into trouble or had a problem with having the mill able to put them in the cute little pillows. And so for a very short time, they sold their silk mohair on cones. And so I really wanted to get my hands on some and I got the color powder. And powder, I would say, is a pinkish gold. It definitely is a neutral. And I, I, I would say it has more of a a slight pink tone to it. Um, but I really, really loved this color. I don't really know that it's the most flattering color on me because I'm kind of pinky, but I, I like it nonetheless. So with the pattern, you held three strands of mohair together and then did this brioche pattern. So in order to do three strands of mohair when you have just a single strand, I believe Petite Knit shared this in a like a video tutorial or something with the pattern. But essentially what you would do is you would take your one strand of mohair and then you would um, kind of make a two strands like that. And then where the strand was meeting your, your main strand, you would hold it again. So now you have three strands and you can knit with that. Once you get to knitting, and you get to this point where you're about to run out of three strands, you would pull your yarn through and then continue on and you still have three strands. And you just continue to do that as you are knitting the sweater. So I really at some point was like over the sweater and thought, oh, I should frog it, but mohair and then three strands, triple stranded. I just thought I might as well just throw out the yarn, which I didn't really want to do. So I kind of kept going. And I actually the other day got a notification on 
Instagram that I basically finished this sweater end of March 2021. So it took me obviously not consistently working on it, but about a year to knit the sweater, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, I mean, not really. Like, that's just what it took for me at the time. I feel like I'm a much faster knitter now and probably more proficient in brioche, so it wouldn't be as long. But essentially, because of the added instruction and everything, it made it just harder for me to do. So the way that this sweater is knit is you start with the back panel, then you pick up um, stitches and knit your shoulders, and then you continue and then you knit um, in the round. So you're knitting brioche flat with increases on the front, and then, well, increases and decreases. So there's just a lot going on in the pattern. Even without the modification, I feel like there's still a lot going on in the pattern. So it just makes it a little more challenging and definitely not something I would recommend as a second sweater or a beginning sweater at all. But that sheer stubborn determination may push you through and you could do it. So I probably chose the wrong pattern for, you know, still learning. And I had only knit a hat in brioche before, so I had only done decreases in brioche. And this was also my first tubular cast off, which gives it this nice kind of finished edge. And I actually think I did a pretty good job which is probably bad to say, but I kept it from being so tight. I would say right here, I actually started to like make mistakes with that, but then I kind of evened it out, so it, it's okay. Um, but when I finished the sweater, I was so sick and tired of knitting it and frustrated because I had made a mistake here. I think in the modification instead of having so many decreases you would have had two that kind of just continued on um, and then I had to kind of mirror it on the other side of the sweater so that they were at least the same and I couldn't fix mistakes so if I made a mistake in the brioche stitches I had to tink back or knit backwards um, to fix it so I, I was feeling frustrated with the amount of time that I had spent on it and then when it was finished, I tried it on and it looked like a poofy coat. Like that's how I perceived it. And I did not like it at all. And so I never wove in the ends. I just like set it aside and started knitting something else. And I was also a monogamous knitter-ish, I think at the time. And so I wanted to cast something else on and I just didn't want to deal with this sweater anymore and set it aside and I kind of forgot about it. Like I remember that I made the sweater but I had just set it aside and did nothing with it, never wore it um, until about two weeks ago and then I decided, oh hey, I'm gonna block this sweater to see what happens because otherwise I'm getting rid of it. And after I blocked it, I was like, oh, this is kind of a nice sweater. So block your nets. Um, it definitely made the drape a lot nicer and just gave it a lot better look. It's not as poofy, it like definitely like relaxed the fabric and I really like it now. So I think in hindsight, I probably would not have picked this pattern just given my ability, I just wasn't quite there. And so it felt more frustrating rather than a joyful project. And then I think if I were to do something differently on it, I would also consider maybe holding two mohair and a fingering or something like that because I think the three mohair, especially just for where I was at knitting wise, would have been a little bit easier. The tubular bind off and three strands of mohair was kind of insane. If you've done a tubular bind off and or have knit with mohair, you'll understand why. But it was just a lot of yarn management. I feel like I'm constantly eating mohair when I'm wearing it. Um, but I do like this sweater quite a bit. Also, what was kind of funny to me was I had, I guess, purchased the yarn, I want to say in the summer of 2020. There was a knit along in September of 2020 
I think it was only like a month or so. Well, I guess it didn't take me a year. September, October, November, December. So I'm going to say, I bet you I started a little bit early. I bet you this took me, this sweater took about seven months for me to knit. So not a year, it was about seven months. And I did not finish during the make, the make long time. And I was frustrated about that. Like there's just a lot of frustrations and I probably should have just been kinder to myself and realized that it's just like, it's going to take what it's going to take and that's fine. Okay. So I feel like I now like this sweater. I will actually probably wear it. Um, it's a good neutral color. And again, let me know if you think it's not a good color. Like I won't be offended. I think it just kind of washes me out a little bit or maybe makes it look like I'm not wearing a sweater if I'm farther away. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe you should just give it away. So you guys so wonderfully helped me pick out my next cast on. We decided to do the Monday Sweater by Petite Knit, which I realize this is now becoming a Petite Knit podcast. No, it's not. But I used the color Krampus by Volum Vine Yarn. And it's a really interesting color. It has like, um, well, the ghost lace comes out looking very like a sagey green. And the Nouveau base takes the color in a, I would say kind of a pinkish beige with green and maroon um, speckles. It's a really, really interesting, pretty color. And let me show you how it's knitting up. So yesterday I split for the sleeves. This is the back. And I am in love with the sweater and how it's turning out. I have to say, I really love petite knits patterns in that they're very wearable. I feel like most of the things that I knit in her patterns, I could keep and wear. They're not trendy at all. You could wear them for years and years and years. Um, this is a raglan sweater and it has some short row shaping in the back, um, a folded collar, which is really pretty. And it's kind of just been a really nice, nice knit. I realized while knitting this, and I'm sure this is probably a lie, but I'm going with it for right now. This might be my very first sweater that's just a single strand of fingering and a single strand of mohair, which seems weird to me. I guess I've knit triple mohair. I've knit two fingering and a mohair. I've certainly met, knit just a fingering sweater. But yeah, this might actually be the first one, which kind of blows my mind because I've, well, actually I lied. I'm such a liar. <laughs> I made a ranunculus and a <laughs> love note. Oh my God. Okay, so I'm a liar. I don't know. Anyway, um, this fabric that this is creating though is like amazing. I love the density of it. It's really, really light and airy and warm. Um, I'm really actually excited to finish this so I can wear it before it gets too hot here but I am loving this color. It's really pretty. And the raglan detail is just like perfect. Is it not perfect? So I just, I also think a lot of her patterns to me feel very intuitive. And so, well, minus this one. But basically, I do think that it really, um, they're easy to follow. This would be probably, I don't ever want to say beginner or not beginner, but maybe advanced beginner because you do have short row shaping while you're doing the raglan. Um, and that could just be something you would need to pay extra attention to, but I certainly think you could do it. But yeah, so that's what I have so far. I'm really liking it. I really want it to get done, but I'm really enjoying. I love this color. It's so good. The speckles are pretty awesome. 
because the maroon ones are really coming through nicely and then the greens are just kind of here and there making the the green ghost lace stand out. I just added my second ball and so far, knock on wood, okay so um, so far this has been so much fun to knit. I've really enjoyed it. I really think that um, it could not be cozier um, and I really just want to get it done so that I can wear it. Um, I obviously have a long ways to go. I've only done one inch of the body so it probably won't be done for a while but I've really enjoyed just the feel of it in my hands while knitting it so that's kind of been my primary work in progress for this last couple of weeks and I just want to get it done so I can wear it before it gets like actually warm here okay so that's the Monday sweater progress other than that, I have been slowly working on my half and half wrap. Um, I haven't made a ton of progress. I'm still on super orange. It's really just going in the car with me everywhere I go. I feel like it probably doesn't look a lot different. Um, but I really enjoy knitting it. I definitely will get out of the car if I'm wearing something dark. Have little tiny flecks of orange on me and that's okay. But it... It's been good car knitting and relaxing knitting. And I feel like if you're not a knitter, which I don't know why you'd be watching this, but if you're not a knitter, it's, I feel like you always have several, for me personally, I have lots of projects going. I have the complicated project that takes a lot of brain power. I have the one that's like kind of fun. And then I have the like super easy one that you don't have to think. And right now I would say this is categorized as the more thinking one. This one is like delicious to knit with because it's so soft. I don't know <laughs> what Kristen over at Volenbein is using in this mohair, but let me tell you, it is like magic. It's something about this is just makes my senses so happy. And then the half and half is just like easy knitting and this beautiful, like a bright, happy color. So it makes me want to grab it. The next sweater that I am sure you've heard me talk about many times, if you have been watching, is my Ferda Genser, which is right behind me. Um, I am also going to insert some pictures of me wearing this sweater, just so you can get a better idea of what I am talking about. So this sweater is the Ferda Genser by Anna and Heidi Pickles. I have been using my Sweet Nesting Advent for this sweater. Um, currently I am about to finish off the body of this sweater um, and add the hem. I I originally thought I would make it through all of these colors, but it turns out I'm probably going to make it to about this color right here. So I was worried I wouldn't have enough red, but I don't even think we're going to make it that far into the colors. And so I'm going to end up talking about this teal green color with a little pink in it. So this is the color and ball form that I'm talking about. And I'm not sure I would have enough to finish the entire hem, although I might because how it kind of looks best is so much like the top, it has the triangle here and then the, um, well in this case the neckline, but then it would be the hem. So what I plan on doing, I'm going to use this and if I run out, that's gonna be okay because I have the full skein that came with the Advent, which is this color. And I kind of think they're going to be similar ish or similar enough so that um, it won't matter if I end up use, needing to use this. So that's the current plan right now and if I do that I probably will then default to make this the cuffs but it could always change. So that's kind of the plan with my Ferda Genser. I tried it on when I kind of completed this to see how much longer I needed to knit 
And what I noticed was um, the top was a little bit more blousey than I kind of was expecting. Um, but here's what happened. I actually didn't fully block or steam block the bottom of this sweater. And so um, once I did steam it out a little bit, it was a little less snug, um, but I really was concerned that I was getting this weird blousey area um, kind of like to my bust or just below my bust and I was gonna have weird sleeves. So the sleeves still are a little bit larger than I was thinking they were going to be. Um, so I'm hoping that when I go to actually knit the sleeve and pick up the bottom stitches that it's not going to be so blousey. And there are decreases in the sleeve, so I'm hoping that kind of looks better. Because currently I'm not 100% liking the way it fits, although I always hit this point in projects where I tend to really not like them. <laughs> right when I'm kind of completing a certain section or almost done with the sweater, I get this point where I'm like, oh, do I hate this? Like all of a sudden. So I don't know if I'm maybe just in that stage or if maybe it's being weird. I haven't decided yet. And I didn't fully like properly steam block it because I definitely have some areas that are a little wrinkled and I know that that will come out with um, an actual block but I can kind of get rid of it a little bit more with steam blocking. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. It's really not a project right now that's bringing me a ton of joy. And so I think that's why I've kind of like slowed on it, but we'll see. So not sure how far I will be in the next episode of the podcast, but who knows, maybe I could surprise us all, including myself and actually have it finished. <laughs> but that's kind of where I'm at with that. A few days ago, I picked up the latest pom-pom and I have had a chance to kind of go through it. I really like this bag on the back a lot, like a lot, a lot. I think it's really nice. So what shockingly has had my attention in this issue of pom-pom is this pattern and I believe it's pronounced Wayfon. And it is this holy, I guess you could say, um, top that looks woven. And surprisingly, it's crochet. And I can crochet. Um, I'm gonna try and find a picture. I normally make these type of crochet things right here. Um, like objects, blankets, a scarf, but clothing I have not done. And I am not saying I'm going to cast this on by any means, but I, I loved all the patterns. That one was the one that I was like, ooh, I really think that one's cool. So I'm pondering, I'll let you know. Tell me if you are going to cast on anything in this issue. I really, really like it a lot. I feel like for some reason, when Pom Pom puts out like a spring summer magazine those are the ones I'm actually the most drawn to or ones that I feel you could wear in a lot of seasons but yeah I I am very curious about this sweater I think it would be quite fun and the bag too is just really really cute so that is kind of I, I've noticed lately that I feel I have a lot of things I want to knit and I feel like I have sweater quantities in my stash that I want to like I have a desire to knit the pattern that I have in mind for them so I have kind of slowed down in my yarn purchasing for now like I could say that and then tomorrow I'll go and buy yarn I don't know but for now I have been interested in more patterns and more tools and learning more things like that than really yarn purchases. So I probably, unless I'm going to be casting something on right away or I'm asking you to help me, I'm not going to be flashing the stash, if you will, at least not for now. That could be maybe its own thing separate, but I that's kind of what I've got going on. Just some chit chat for you today. So I have been watching Love is Blind. It is 
a true guilty pleasure. I enjoy every second of it. I really like, love watching it, it's my favorite. At the point that I am filming this, there is still episodes to be released for the end, but I am like caught up, that's how much I have binged it. But I am very excited to see who stays together and all of that, that's always like very fascinating to me. And then, besides Love is Blind, also please let me know if I'm the only person watching this or if you're like binging it too. Um, because I would love to talk about it <laughs> some more. Other thing that I watched was Bullet Train. It's starring Brad Pitt. I laughed out loud so many times I can't even tell you. It would be like a comedy action film and it's very silly and very good. There's a lot of famous people in it. Brad is hilarious, like my friend Brad. Brad Pitt's hilarious. Um, and then also, Brian Tyree Henry and An Andrew Koji were awesome. I, I loved the whole film. So, so good. Could not recommend it enough. I did not even knit. I actually set my knitting down and just watched it and thoroughly enjoyed it, which is very rare. I'm normally knitting something while I'm sitting. So it was just very good. Highly, highly recommend. In the last couple of weeks, I worked on a needle review video. So if you're interested in that or you haven't seen it, I will link that here. Also, um, if you are enjoying these videos, please make sure to subscribe. I am toying with the idea of doing a live. And so if you'd like to be notified of that, please make sure that you do subscribe so you get a notification. If you liked this video, it really, really helps me to show up more in search results if you give it a thumbs up. I can't thank you enough if you do. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Otherwise, I will be seeing you in a couple of weeks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe I'll have a finished sweater, maybe. Otherwise, please go over to Instagram, say hello, introduce yourself. I would love to meet you. I wanna hear what you're working on and that's it. So have a wonderful day, happy knitting and watch this needle video if you haven't.